praise, we honor you, we adore you. Thank you, Jehovah. Father, we just bless your name tonight. We lift you up. We thank you for who you are. We exalt and we magnify your name. Daddy, you're Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Sidkin, our banner and our strength. And for another opportunity to serve you, to share your word, Lord, we ask that you come and bless in the name of Jesus. We soak the whole of this broadcast tonight in the blood of Jesus. And we ask that you take absolute preeminence. We return all the glory to you, Lord. And we ask for a release and a positioning of your angels to maintain security around us. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Good evening. This is your brother, Pastor Tumiche, from the suburbs of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in the United States of America. This is our deliverance hour with Pastor Tumiche. And you're welcome. If you join us or you watch our sermons you're welcome if this is your first time you're also welcome and i'm hoping that tonight you'll be blessed through the power of the holy spirit hallelujah glory be to god i'm hoping that you've had a wonderful weekend and today as usual we have our, our program on a sunday uh it's about 9 p.m here in um in East, uh, eastern central time so you're welcome to join us we thank God. Tonight, we're dealing with something called ejecting evil hanger-ons. Evil hanger-ons. Those who hang on and they're evil, evil in behavior. We're talking about ejecting them from our lives tonight. That's what tonight's sermon is about. It's called ejecting evil hanger-ons. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So, it's a very, very simple sermon, but it's, you know, it's by what the Lord said we should um, speak on tonight and pray about. And by his power, we are definitely going to overcome in every situation. We're in 2024. We're in a new year. This is the second uh, Sunday of 2024. I don't know what time God will allow you to ever see this sermon, but whenever it is, Tonight, as I'm praying, is actually the second Sunday of 2024, which is June 14, 2024. We all usually have aspirations and goals and targets for every new year, just like this new year. And the truth also is that God has aspirations and goals for his children. And when you are a child of God, the only promise you have is what is to prosper is to excel, is to do well. That is his plan for you and I at all times. And we have to meet the plan of the one who made us. So I'll tell you how is his word. Psalm 1 from 1 to 3 states it pretty clearly. He said, blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, the law of the Lord, and who meditates on this law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. I mean, wouldn't you want to be in a situation where whatever you set your hands to prospers that is the will of god for us unfortunately i mean many of us don't achieve that situation where whatever we lay our hands on prospers a lot of it yeah has to do with our own mindsets because many of us just we shoot ourselves in the foot without the kind of mindsets that we give ourselves if you have the wrong mindset you can't you find it difficult to prosper because as a man's heart is that's the way he is as a man think it, you know, so a man is. That's the way you end up. If your mind is that that has a negative outlook, you're always thinking negatively, you know, your mind is that you will never succeed or you see only the negative in anything you set your hand to, yeah, you you have a rough, uh, 
you have a rough journey in life. But if you are somebody who can somehow set their minds to positivity at all times, no matter what they're seeing, you hold on to the promises of God in your mind, you will always succeed. So, once you are his child, prosperity and fulfillment are God's plan for you. That's what his plan is. And his word states it. But if you still look, even inside the word of God, you will see people who, despite what I'm saying being the plan of God, they still fell pretty short. You know, they fell short and they fell short not because it wasn't God's plan, but because they had human hangers on. There are different things that can slow you down. Maybe somewhere in the near future, maybe even next week, in the next week's program, maybe we can deal with other uh, things that can affect you moving forward. There are other hangers on that are not of a human nature, you know, that can hold you back. But tonight we're talking about those which are of a human nature. Because human beings can hold you back. Do not fool yourself and say, oh, nobody can hold me back. There are people who can hold you back. I'll show you examples in the Bible before we pray. See, these people I'm talking about, they are agencies. They are agents. What is an agent? Again, is somebody who acts on behalf of somebody. And in this case, they are agents of the one who sends them. There's only one person that wants your failure. He's the enemy of an accuser of brethren. There's only one, but he has agencies because he cannot be in one place at a time. So he has people who carry out his wishes. Some of them advertently, some inadvertently. That is, some know that they're doing that. That's their mission. And then there's some who don't even know that they're actually doing that, but they're still going to do it. And at the end of the day, like I said, all that guy wants to do is to ensure that you don't su uh, succeed, that you don't prosper. And that's not the will of God. So we're going to have to change that with prayers. So people who hang on to you and do evil, they are called evil hangers on. So a hanger on is a person who associates with another person or associates with a group in a psychophantic manner, basically for the purpose of gaining some other advantage, usually a personal advantage. And when they are evil, is to gain something that their master has sent them to do. So maybe they'll gain some form of a some form of promotion or something in the realm of the spirit by doing things that will harm you or will mess you up. That's what evil hangers on. In 2024, you and I have no desire to fall by the wayside as a result of the activities of evil hangers on. You don't want that. We will not be that. That's not the will of God for us. And we don't, since we don't, you know, since we don't have that desire, you know, uh, it won't happen to you and I in the name of Jesus. But then, like I said, we need to pray. We need to be prayerful people. It's, it's either you're in 2024 or you are in 2019 or you're moving on to 2028. The child of God has to be somebody that has prayers as his will. He has to be somebody who has prayers as their way. Hallelujah. There are different types of evil hangers on. Glory to God. Different types of evil hangers on. I'll tell you a few of them. I'll show you examples of them in the word of God. And then when I've shown you, we can pray. Because we need to pray so that they don't bring us down in 2024. I'm sure there are some people who are already fasting. Maybe if you're fasting 21 days, fasting uh, 30 days. You are denying yourself because you want to prepare yourself for success in the year that we've just entered in. But here are prayers that will also help you. Understanding and knowledge is part of deliverance. Hallelujah. So there are some that impose, no, I mean that we impose on ourselves. I'll give you different types now. There are some evil hangers on that we impose on ourselves or we bring into our lives against the will of God. In the Bible, there's one fellow like that. His name was Lot. And he was the nephew of the great man, the friend of God, called Abraham. The one of which we are now members of his covenant. As long as Lot, his nephew, was in the vicinity of Abraham, he could not make a full use of the capacities that God had given him to fulfill a great destiny, which was to have children 
like the sand of the earth, you know, or the sands of the beach, have prosperous on every side. He prospered, but his prosperity was nothing until he moved away from Lot. And how did he come? Lot came because, oh, here's my nephew. And many of us do stuff like that. We bring people into our lives that God did not ask us to help. People that God did not ask us to assist. Or even if you assist them, as well to assist them from afar off. We bring them in against the will of God. And when these things happen, then stuff begins to happen around us. An example is if you marry wrongly. I've had situations where marriages want to dissolve. And people say, how can you be a pastor and be supporting that marriage to dissolve? Well, I've had one or two situations where I had to support marriages to dissolve. And you'll say, gosh, what kind of pastor is this fellow we're talking to right now or he's watching? When God's hand was never in it, there are situations, there are cohesivenesses, there are uh, combinations that God never had a hand in. And they become marriages. And then there's struggling going on. The guy beats the woman or uh, she comes into his life and then everything starts to go wrong. His finances, his life, everything turns upside down and he's wondering, how did this ever come to be? Well, guess what? God didn't even ask you to go there. And that's the problem many people have. It's not, it's not just marriages. There are businesses God did not ask you to do with somebody else. And you went and did it. And then all of a sudden, your business is collapsing or stuff happens around you. Those are evil hangers on. Lot was that kind of a person. He was that kind of person. And when he was there, there is no way that Father Abraham could possibly move forward in the will of God, in the plan that God had for him. If you are in that kind of situation, the Lord will re rescue you tonight in the name of Jesus. There are also those that will impose themselves on you and thereby cause confusion around you. An example is the girl possessed with the spirit of divination in Acts 16 from 16 to 19. Two great servants of God, you know, uh, were, were, were moving around, Paul and Silas. And then, let me read it to you, Acts 16 from 16. It says, once we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future, a divining spirit. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the most high God who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, to the glory of God, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the divining spirit left her. When her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace <clears throat> to face the authorities. And that led to them being imprisoned. So there are people like that who attach themselves to you and they come around you and they cause confusion. I remember many years ago, I was going for, for an evangelical uh, assignment. I think it was in Haiti or somewhere. And a couple of days before I'd gone to preach somewhere in some city in Maryland, I think, or Virginia. And I met a lady there who was in that church. And this woman, all she could do was balls. I could feel the spirit of the, of the bezel bob around her. She was just, blah, 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 blah. wherever she was, there was no, there was no, you could not rest. But the, that the evil spirit had known that I was going for a great missionary work. I could not go for that work. Because there was so much confusion, I had to stop going. The lady herself went there, but there was confusion in the place. Thank God some other people took over the mission and it was successful. But as for me, that was to be used mightily, I couldn't go. That's the kind of spirit we're talking about. And they come around, they're hangers on. But their assignment is very, very sure. People fall into this kind of spirit very easily. In this case now, like I said, I went to preach somewhere, I discerned it. 
but it was a bit too late. We were too close to the meeting, and this person sold confusion. When you go and do tarot card readings, when you go and do um, seances, they say they hear from your ancestors or from somebody who remember your family who has died. That's the spirits that these things come and then they hang on to you and then they begin to sow confusion around you and sow all kinds of negativities around you. And at the end of the day, you get into a lot of trouble. That's, that's another set of evil hangers on. You need to be careful. You need to be careful. There's a story in 1 Kings 13. It's the story of an old prophet and a young prophet that the Lord had sent on a specific assignment. Because it was God that had sent this fellow on a specific assignment, the enemy knew that the assignment was to be done. So what did he do? He planted an old prophet. And what was the job of the old prophet? Basically, it was to divert the assignment of this fellow. Don't you know I'm also a prophet? And he used that to divert the assignment of this younger prophet. And by that, he destroyed the destiny of that prophet. He couldn't really do what was sent of him. There are people like that. And how are they? They are evil hangers on. They are spiritual people that you need to get rid of. You need to have a spirit that discerns. There are people who are spirit-led, but they are not led by the spirits. Hallelujah. <laughs> I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. The people who are spirit-led, but they are not led by the spirit of God. And there's so many of them because they, they let themselves go and then they get carried away with the assignments they've been giving. And then there's filthy lucre that comes a lot these days. A lot of so-called ministers, prophets, and all that, they've been swayed by filthy lucre. They've been swayed by money. They've been swayed by wanting to be known, wanting to be recognized, wanting to be part of, of associations that God didn't send them. And the next thing, these are the people that are sent to you. I know many ministers of God that go and join <clears throat> associations of ministers and so on and so forth because they believe that that will make them rise high and so on and so forth. There's so many of them like that. And unfortunately, these are the people that now come and they come and prophesy to others. And when they do that, things go wrong. Because they've joined themselves with those they should not join themselves to. And that's what happened to that young prophet in 1 Kings 13. He met an evil hanger on who in this case was a bona fide prophet of God. Who actually was called. But unfortunately he was once sent to go and cause and sow confusion. You need to be able to discern 2024. I tell you, there are places you should not enter that are so-called places of worship or places of uh, ministry. You have to discern. If you are in the wrong place, you must ask God to tell you. You have to test the spirit. Is it the spirit of pride that is beginning to operate in that place? Is it the spirit of me? When it's no longer about Jesus, there's less talk about Jesus now. It's more talk of the programs we need to do and what the pastor is planning or what his wife uh, is planning. Is it the money they want to spend? Listen, sometimes they want to build giant edifices and buildings. They want to buy giant equipment like airplanes and people miss it completely. Not everybody, but I'm just saying that there are old prophets who are deceiving younger prophets, just like in First Kings 13. And these are also evil hangers on you need to jettison them in your life in 2024 hallelujah i hope somebody's listening and understanding what i'm saying there's the story of the evil assistant gehazi or prophet uh elisha second kings 5 20 to 27 that story is there hmm. and that's another one that we all have to be very very careful about in 2024 you need to excel 
wherever you are, say, I will excel. Say, I will excel wherever you are, because you must excel. This is a year of excellence. Those that have not been sent to you, don't go near them. God didn't send them there. So don't go there. Don't let them come and deceive you. It's the year of excelling. It's the year of prospering, prospering and uh, what did uh, my pastor that preached in church today? Blue, blooming, you know, to, to bloom. Hallelujah. To excel. Hallelujah. It's a year where you have to excel. And because of that, you need to know when to move away from what is not sent. Like I said, the story of Gehazi, 2 Kings 5, 20 to 27. Who was Gehazi? There was prophet Elijah, and then there was his assistant, prophet Elisha, who got a double portion of his boss, Elijah. And then there was Gehazi, who was to take over from Elisha. But let me read this to you. 2 Kings 5, 20 to 27. Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said to himself, My master was too easy on Naaman, this Aramean, by not accepting from him what he brought. As surely as the Lord lives, I will run after him and get something from him. <laughs> the servant of greed. So Gehazi hurried after Naaman. That's a long story, the story of General Naaman. <clears throat> who was healed through the prophetic declarations of a great man like Elisha. So Gehazi hurried after Naaman. When Naaman saw him running towards him, he got down from the chariot to meet him. Listen, this guy, if you read the story from the beginning of, uh, of that passage where I was saying uh, in 2 Kings 5, you see that Naaman had had leprosy and the prophet had told him to go wash himself in a certain river, I think seven times deep yourself, and he came out clean, healed. But the man did not take anything from Naaman. That's the prophet himself. But his assistant ran after Naaman. When Naaman saw him coming, he thought, ah, here is uh, the prophet's assistant. Here is the great man's assistant. So that means that the prophet wants, needs something. And he's a general in the army. Why would a general who's just been healed by a prophet not want to do something for the prophet? That's the mindset that General Naaman had. Everything is all right? Gehazi answered. Because the man had asked him, is everything all right? My master sent me to say, lie. Two young men from the company of the prophets have just come to me from the hill country of Ephraim. Please give them a talent of silver and two sets of clothing. Gehazi, because of the spirit of greed, went and used the name of his prophet, of his great prophet, of his minister, to go and get filthy lucre from General Naaman. Oh, by all means, take two talents. He said, he urged Gehazi to accept them and then tied up the two talents of silver in two bags, we are told, with two sets of clothing. He gave them to two of his servants and they carried them ahead of Gehazi. His master did not send him on errand, but he went. This is an evil hanger on. And there are assistants like this that you work with at work. There are people like this who you don't know. They are going around telling lies about you, using your name in places they should not use it, and destroying your integrity and your reputation. There are people tied to you who destroy your reputation. Their assignment is to gain for themselves. And by that, they will do anything to destroy your... I've had people like that. I've worked with them so many times, both in ministry and in the secular world. Their assignment is for themselves. Gehazis. Their assignment. I remember I used to have some ministers around me whose aim was to... Because we had a very... Uh, a very great prophetic ministry sometime that was back uh, in Nigeria in those days and these people would lie to the to the um, to the rich members of the congregation and get, take things from them that's even ministry but I said even today in their assistance in your place of work their assistance in your ministries their assistance in your businesses 
who do this. They go around seeking what you did not send them to do. You need to be careful. There are spouses who do this, who are not sent on errands. Oh, my husband is a judge. Oh, my husband is a general in the army. Oh, my husband is a managing director in the bank. If He will not take bribes. He will not take favors. But if I go and say he needs it, or I just go because they know I'm his wife or his assistant, they will give me something. So they use that opportunity. The master did not send them to do anything, but they go and now pay due favor. There are people like that in your life in 2024. You need to get rid of them because they won't let you get to where God has said you will get to. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. When Gehazi came to the hill, he took the things from the servants and put them away in the house. He sent the men away and they left. He did not let his master know that he had used his name to peddle influence, to gain filthy lucre, to get money, to get uh, designer clothes. He didn't let his his because his master, of course, he had a designing spirit. When he went in and stood before his master, verse 25 of 2 Kings 5, Elisha asked him, where have you been, Gehazi? Because he has a discerning spirit. You have to get one too. Your servant didn't go anywhere, Gehazi answered. He's forgotten that he's dealing with a man who had the double portion of the great Elijah. Hallelujah, a prophet after the heart and the manner of God. He's forgotten. But Elisha said to him, was not my spirit with you when the man got down from his chariot to meet you? You forget that it's my spirit you are using. <laughs> glory be to god that's the mistake many young ministers make many young people make they get promoted to a place where they think they are this the same level as the one who sent them you have to be careful if your master is a prophet make sure that you don't you cannot be above your master that's what the bible says you cannot be somebody who learned from your master and be above him. You need to always respect those who are above you. There are ministers you will rise under them and then your congregation becomes 10,000. Theirs is still at 200, 300. And you think you're above them. God doesn't judge that way. That's the mistake many young ministers make. So your, par your parish pastor now has only... 300 members in their church, you've gone to start another parish from under them, you now have 3,000. And because of that, you cannot behave anymore. It's called the Gehazi spirit. Those kind of people, me, I always want them to be far away from me. I don't associate with some people like that because I know that it's a spirit and it's going to slow me down, it's going to weigh me down. You have to have a discerning spirit in 2024. Was not my spirit with you when the man got down from his chariot to meet you, is this the time to take money or to accept clothes or olive groves and vineyards or flocks and herds or male and female slaves? That's the mistake we make in the world. And I tell you, I said there are so many ministers of God who have missed it. I'm not judging them. It's just, if I'm judging them, I'm just measuring them up with the word of God, like I'm saying right now. I'm not judging. I'm just saying what they're doing and what the word of God is saying, they're completely different. I try not to be that kind of person. And I always pray God to help me. I'm not perfect, please. Don't misunderstand me. But we must not go after olive groves, vineyards, flocks and herds, Mercedes-Benz cars, uh, bags of uh, dollars, and so on and so forth in the time in which we're in so that the prophetic gift will be solid so that when god speaks you can say god spoke i remember a couple of weeks ago the lord showed me a vision of an uh airplanes crashing and i said it and some people called me and they were texting me are you sure it's not you falling that god is saying you should be careful of falling <laughs> i said no i am convinced that i saw a vision and by the grace of god we prayed and lives were saved. We all saw it in the world. The whole of the world saw lives saved in Japan and other places. There was a plane whose door blew off. You have to have that prophetic, a clean prophetic spirit by trying to live in it. I'm not saying I'm the purest person, but you have to try. You have to make an attempt to live purely so that God will speak 
clearly to you. And you can use that to elevate the world. You can use it to save lives. When God, the Bible says he does not, he doesn't permit things, he doesn't tell his prophets. If something has happened, God has told somebody somewhere. He has shown somebody a dream. This is going to happen. Go and intercede. Because the Lord doesn't want chaos. Lord was telling me that we needed to pray against a lot of wars that might become one conflagration this year. And I told people, I better believe it's from God, it's not from me. Hallelujah. Oh, what did Naaman say? Oh, what did um, uh, Prophet Elisha said? He told him, 2 Kings 5, 27, he told Gehazi servant, Naaman's leprosy will cling to you and to your descendants forever. Then Gehazi went from Elisha's presence and his skin was leprous. <clears throat> it has become as white as snow. He got a curse. When Elijah was leaving, Elisha got a double portion of the anointing. When Gehazi was leaving, he didn't get the ministry. He got a curse and became leprous. And they say his descendants forever. Evil hangers on you need to get rid of those kind of people in the year 2024. Potiphar's wife is somebody else I remember when I was meditating. In Genesis 39, 5 to 20. She was an evil hanger on in a place where Joseph was an apostle sent by God. God was bringing, was building Joseph up because of the assignment he had for him to be the prime minister of Egypt in the time of seven years of mean farming. He wanted to save those people. And he wanted to also save his people. That is the people of Israel in those days. Potiphar's wife is in the Bible. She was the wife of the captain of Pharaoh's guard, Potiphar, in the time of Jacob and of his 12 sons. She falsely accused brother Joseph of attempting to rape her because he had rejected her sexual advances, resulting in imprisonment. You need to discern. There are women like this. Oh, I've met a few of them in my own life. People who the enemy has sent it's from the pit of hell. Don't fool yourself if you're a man or if you're a woman and you're trying to stand upright. There are men that the devil has sent as hangers on to destroy your reputation. They will go back and say, oh, that woman, don't mind her. Do you know I've been with her? And this is, and this is what we did. They were not with her, but they go and lie. They'll go and destroy somebody's marriage. There are women like that who say, he did this and this, this with me when he did not. We see them every day inside the paper. Oh, he groped me. They won't talk about it for 30 years. And then they will, now they'll come and destroy the person. These days they say they call it canceling. They'll cancel the person. They will destroy the person. There are people like this. They are evil hangers on. Their assignment is to destroy uh, reputations, destroy people's integrity, destroy their destinies. They could be men, they could be women. I'm just giving the example of Potiphar's wife because she's in the Bible. There are people like that. And in 2024, you must discern. You must run from every appearance of the devil. These days, I don't do anything without my wife standing by my side. Because when you get to the age I'm getting to now in the 60s, you need to understand that there are people who are still being sent to mess you up. And even if you are younger, 20, and you're watching this, or you are 30, beware of those women. Or your wife is far away from you, maybe halfway around the world, or your husband is far away from you. There are people like that. Their aim is not to help you. Their aim is to destroy you. Their aim to, is to bring you down. I know one or two young men who are like, uh, <clears throat> they were mentees to me. I was their mentors. Both of them are dead today. They are dead because they allowed strange women to enter their families and separate them from their families. And both young men did not die very good deaths. They did die deaths of loneliness. They are young. I'm not even sure they made 50 or if they did, then they must have been just 50 or thereabouts. They are young people. That is the effect of a Potiphar's wife spirit. They separate you and they destroy you. Those men are dead now. 
<clears throat> the women who did that to them, they are still alive. Of course, they will be judged one day. But in the meantime, they've destroyed those families because those families don't have their fathers anymore. There are those programmed by God to test you and make you grow in faith and spiritual strength. <laughs> People like Judas Iscariot, he was sent to propel Jesus to fulfill destiny, but he betrayed Jesus. Even Peter, with all his strength, he denied Jesus three times. There's programming, but they hung around Jesus. But when it was time to be there for Jesus, they fell by the wayside. And if that can happen to Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who are you and I? What strength do we have except we ask him and say, Lord, help us. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. I cannot do anything unless we do that. In 2024, you have to do that. There are people programmed by God because he wants to build you, but you must still pass the test. Job went through that. Have you considered my son, Job? Hallelujah. I've always prayed, Lord, please don't, 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 don't do me like Job because I don't know how Job came through that, a Job kind of situation. Have you considered my son, Job? And he let the devil have a season with him. May the mercy of God not allow that in our lives in Jesus' name. May the love of God and his mercy, his grace, not let us go through what Job went through. Amen? But there are people like that who are actually sent by God. You cannot kill him. That's what he told the devil. But you can do anything you want him. Buffet him the way you want. Oh, may God help us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So, Brothers and sisters, we must pray for a discernment to recognize the wiles of the enemy. We must be able to identify who these evil hangers on are. We must be able to pray for strength and faith to overcome them. Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb. That is the one that ransomed us and saved us from sin. And reconcile us to Christ Jesus. And also by the words of our testimonies. Testimonies come through prayers. Results come through prayers. That's what testimonies are. Testimonies are results. You go through a test and then you come out and then you have a result. We must be able to overcome. Ejecting evil hangovers, you must be able to do that. I want you to bow down your head and begin to thank God for this word of God that has come because it's supposed to ginger you to the next phase of what we want to do in the next few minutes, which is just to pray. Go ahead and just begin to thank him right now and say, Father, oh, I just want to thank you for your word that has just come right now because it was sent to me specifically to help me tonight. Tell him that you thank him for, this, for the spirit of God that is in the sermon that we're giving right now. Thank him for the, you thank him for all the incredible things that will come because of that. Go ahead, go ahead and pray that in the mighty name of Jesus. Just go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus. That Father, I just thank you. I just thank you, Father. I just thank you, Lord. For 2024, I just thank you, Lord. Please pray in the name of Jesus. Pray, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's thank him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Those whose plan is to convert your glory because of their evil hanging on, God wants to deal with them right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah to your name. Oh, Daddy, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. You're going to say, Father, every enhancement fashioned against my glory by evil hangers on, they will not prosper in 2024. Go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus that every enhancement fashioned against my glory, that is every weapon fashioned against my glory through evil hangers on, 
will not prosper in this year 2024. They will not prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. They will not prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. They will not prosper. Every, fash, every weapon that has been fashioned against my glory by evil hangers on will not prosper in the name of Jesus. Will not prosper in the name of Jesus. I said they will not prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray. Amen. Amen. The next prayer point. They are going to say my glory that evil enhancers, evil hangers on wants to deem let it be too hot for them to handle my glory that evil hangers on want to deem let it be too hot for them to handle let it be too hot for them to handle let it be too hot for them to handle let it be too hot for them to handle let it be too hot for them to handle in the name of jesus the glory of my children let it be too hot for them to the enemy to handle in the name of jesus where these enemies are evil hangers on, let them be expunged in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 <laughs> that guy and his wife, what did they do? What did they do? There's a group of human beings. They came together in Acts and they began to serve the Lord People were selling their properties, their lands and everything. And they were in the midst of this people, but they decided that they were going to lie. And because of that, the Lord ejected them. They're going to say, Father, anyone that is in my association of life that wants to use evil means to destroy our association, eject them in the name of Jesus. Eject them in the name of Jesus. Eject them in the name of Jesus. Anybody in my association, in my life association, that wants to destroy the associations I have, Lord, eject them, eject them, eject them, eject them, eject them in the mighty name of Jesus. 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 We have prayed. Amen. I'm talking of Ananias and Sapphira's brethren. In case you don't know who I'm talking about. In Acts 5. They're going to say, Father, evil hangers on like Ananias and Sapphira that will not obey your commands around me. Eject them from near me in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray. Evil hangers on like Ananias and Sapphira that will not obey your commands around me. Eject them forcefully, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Eject them forcefully, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Eject them forcefully, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Eject them forcefully, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bible says he's the one that makes diviners mad. In Isaiah, you're going to say, Father, all those evil hangers on around me, divining against my destiny, divining against the destiny of my children, make them mad according to your word. In the name of Jesus, every evil diviner hanging on around me, gathering information about me and my children to cancel our destinies. Lord, make them mad according to your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Make them mad in the mighty name of Jesus. Make them mad in the mighty name of Jesus. Make them mad, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Make them mad, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. I said, make them mad, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Part of that word is in Isaiah 44, 25. It says it frustrates the tokens of the liars. And then he makes the violence mad. They're going to say, Father, frustrate every token of evil hangers on and make them mad in the mighty name of Jesus. Destroy their wise counsel in the name of Jesus. Make their knowledge foolish in the name of Jesus. I'm just praying with Isaiah 44, 25. Go ahead and pray. Father, every evil hanger on that wants to lie against me, frustrate every of their tokens. Make them mad. 
turn their wise counsel backwards. Make their knowledge foolish in this year 2024. Make their knowledge foolish in this year 2024. In the name of Jesus, make their knowledge foolish in this 2024, O oh Lord. I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I hope you are enjoying the prayer. Hallelujah. You are going to say, Father, every witchcraft operation of evil hangers on to influence my glory for evil, scattered it tonight in the name of Jesus. Every evil witchcraft of operation of evil hangers on to influence my glory for evil, scatter, scatter in the name of Jesus. Scatter, scatter in the name of Jesus. Scatter, scatter in the name of Jesus. Scatter in Jesus' name we pray. The Lord said there's somebody online. You are the managing director of an organization. Maybe you watch this at some time. But right now the Lord is ministering concerning you. And there are people who practice witchcraft in your office. They come and they cast spells in your office. And you're saying, oh, they're just playing. They're just, they say I'm a witch and you think it's a joke. They are real witches. But the Lord is saying, because you watch this, right now let the power and the anointing of God go and cancel witchcraft in your office. Let the Lord drive them mad and out of that your office so that you can prosper, so that your office can prosper. You that managing director, I decree into your office this year. I say it will prosper in the name of Jesus. It must prosper in the name of Jesus. It must prosper. That is what God sent me to do. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You are thinking of evil hangers on. There are also family elders. There are family elders who are evil hangers on. Some of them are after you every minute. They want to know what's happening to you. They want to hang around you so they can gain information to use. You are going to pray. Excuse me. You are going to pray. You are going to say, evil family elders hanging around me to remove my glory diabolically. <laughs> they are elders, right? Let them die in the name of Jesus. It's time for them to go. If their job is to be causing confusion in your family, let them go. Evil family elders hanging on to me to remove my glory diabolically. Die instead of me in the name of Jesus. Die instead of me in the name of Jesus. Die instead of me in the name of Jesus. It's time to pray. It's 2024. You must excel. Evil family elders behaving as evil hangers on. Trying to remove my glory diabolically. Die in the name of Jesus. Let the power behind them die. And if they don't give up, let them go. It's time for them. They get too old. Let God deal with them so that you can prosper. It's your turn. They have aged. If they are causing diabolical uh, nonsense around you, let God call them home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You're going to pray. You're going to say, you tree of my glory. You tree of the glory of my children. You shall not be infested by evil hangers on. You shall not be infested by evil hangers on. Go ahead and pray. You tree of my glory. You shall not be, I reject that. You shall not be infested by evil hangers on in the name of Jesus. You shall not be infested by evil hangers on in the name of Jesus. You shall not be infested by evil hangers on in Jesus mighty name we pray amen in jesus mighty name we pray amen 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 you're going to pray psalm 75 verse 10 you're going to pray this way you're going to say every horn of wickedness fashioned against my glory by evil handers on be cut off and destroyed in the name of jesus Every horn of wickedness fashioned against my glory by evil hangers on. Be cut off tonight in the name of Jesus. Be cut off tonight in the name of Jesus. Be cut off tonight in the name of Jesus. Be cut off tonight in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're going to say, by the power in the name of Jesus, I release every work of my hand in 2024 from financial captivity of evil hangers on. Oh, you don't know what it means. There are those who, look, you can have hangers on, that's different. But when they are evil, when the aim is evil, then you need to destroy their evil. I release the works of my hand in 2024 from financial captivity of evil hangers on. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and pray. I release the works of my hand in 2024 from financial captivity of evil hangers on in the name of Jesus. I release the works of my hand in 2024 from financial captivity of evil hangers on in the name of Jesus. I release them now in the name of Jesus. I release them now in the name of Jesus. I release them now in Jesus mighty name. We pray. Amen. Amen. There is the time to ask for a discerning spirit. Holy Spirit, open my eyes to areas where evil hangers on have put myself or my destiny in captivity. Holy Spirit, open my eyes to areas where I have put myself or my destiny in captivity in the hands of evil hangers on. In Jesus' name. God, go ahead and pray whichever way it comes to you. Let the Holy Spirit give you a designing spirit to open your eyes to areas where these evil hangers on have held you or your destiny in captivity in the name of Jesus. And release me also, pray. Release me also in the name of Jesus. Release me also, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Release me also, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Release me also in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I'm hoping you're enjoying the prayers. It's time to pray, brethren. Sometimes you can preach. Sometimes you pray. You intercede with the power above you so that he can help you. Bible says he's always looking down to see who's calling on him, to see who he can help. Hallelujah. The next prayer. Any evil hunger on acting as a strong man, a sign against my rising up, a sign against the rising up of my children, a, rise, a sign against my moving forward, let them be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Every evil hangers on. Let them be destroyed. Let their counsels be destroyed. Let the power behind them be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Any evil hangers on. Acting as a strong man. As a strong woman. A sign against my rising up. A sign against my moving forward. Let them be destroyed by Holy Ghost fire. In the name of Jesus. Let them be destroyed by Holy Ghost fire. In the name of Jesus, let them be destroyed by Holy Ghost fire. In the name of Jesus, let them be destroyed by Holy Ghost fire. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to pray against the manipulations that they do. Hallelujah. Bible says in Zechariah 8, 12, it says, For your seed shall be prosperous. Your vine shall give her fruit. Somebody say amen. And your ground shall yield her increase. And the heaven shall give the dues. And I will cause you to possess all these things. I will cause you to possess all these things. Hallelujah. If evil hangers on enter your work, they can stagnate it. They can retrogress it. They can peg it at a level of productivity that will not go beyond a certain level despite all the efforts you put. So you need to break their yoke, the yoke of their manipulation, in the name of Jesus. Sometimes they just shut up the doors of opportunities against any good thing for you. That is why we need to rise up and use our prayers to hit heaven. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. You're going to say, Father, against every evil hanger on, let my seed prosper. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and pray that prayer. Father, against any evil hunger on, let my seed prosper. In the name of Jesus, let my seed prosper. In the name of Jesus, against my seed, let, I mean, against every evil hunger on, let my seed prosper. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. I just read for you, Zechariah 8.12. Well, you need to pray. You're going to say, Father, 
against every evil hanger on. Let my vine yield her fruit this year. Let my vine yield her fruit this year. In the name of Jesus, against every evil hanger on, let my vines, let them yield their fruit. Let my vines, let them yield their fruit in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. They're going to say, against evil hangers on, let my ground give her increase. Let my ground give her increase. Let my ground give her increase. Let my ground yield her increase in the name of Jesus. Against evil hangers on, let my ground yield her increase in 2024. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. You're going to ask for a release from heaven. You're going to say, against every evil hunger on, O oh Lord, this year, 2024, let my heavens yield their due and their yield their rainfall in the mighty name of Jesus. Let them yield in the mighty name of Jesus. Let them yield in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Jeremiah 44. It says, And now behold, I loose you this day from the chains which were upon your hands. You're going to decree. You're going to say, Any chain that has been used to chain me in 2024 by those evil people hanging around me, Lord, let it be loosed in the name of Jesus. Let it be loosed in the name of Jesus. Any chains that have been used to hook me, to hold me bound <clears throat> in this 2024, let it break. Let those chains break. Let the 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 chains break. The chains break. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty mighty name we are praying amen <clears throat> we are going to, i want you to pray this prayer glory be to god <laughs> because they build the altars too evil hunger they'll come to your house they'll pour libation in a certain part of your house you don't even know ah baba how are you they greet you they go but they've done evil to you you don't know they speak evils into the into the air around your premises they speak evil into the air around your business premises. You're going to decree. Every strange altar sent by evil hangers on, attacking the work of my hands this year, scatter, collapse by fire. Scatter, collapse by fire. Scatter, collapse by fire. Scatter every strange altar attacking the work of my hands from evil hangers on this year. Scatter and collapse by fire. In the name of Jesus, scatter collapse by fire. In the name of Jesus, scatter collapse by fire. In the name of Jesus, scatter collapse by fire. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I'm getting a word that we should pray more of these prayers maybe in the next uh, program again in seven days. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We have only two more minutes for the hour to round up, and I'm going to round it up with prayers for you. Just bow down your head where you are. If you don't know Christ and you are still dilly darling, 2024, every year we're moving closer to our graves, brethren, to the time of judgment. What are you waiting for? Give your life to Jesus. Just bow down your heads. Father, I thank you for anyone who is saying in their hearts right now, they want to separate themselves from the world and come to you. I ask that you in no wise cast them away, but that you accept them into your kingdom and that as they ask for you to be their Lord and Savior, that you bless them, that you write their name in the book of life and that you forgive them all their sins and that from now they will now walk a walk that is close to you in the name of Jesus. I prophesy, whoever is watching me right now, I prophesy into your life for this week that they will not ask for you and say you are in a morgue in the name of jesus that they will not say sudden death came upon you that you're not the victim of an accident you will not be victim of robbery you'll not be victim of uh sudden sickness you'll not be victim of widowhood you'll not be victim of orphanhood in the name of jesus the lord will prosper you on every side throughout this week and I release his angels 
by the faith and the power of the prophet right now to minister to every child of God under the sound of my voice and watching me right now. Minister safety around you. Minister provision around you. Minister healing around you in the name of Jesus. May the Lord prosper you wherever you are as you're saying amen in the mighty name of Jesus. It is well with you. I want you to go and prosper. Go and prosper, brother. Go and prosper, sister. This week, in the mighty name of Jesus. It is well with you. I say one more time. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. <laughs> Shalom. God bless you all. Amen.